So again, we continue with the laws of human nature. Today, we're going to talk about law number five. This one is called the law of covetousness. And here's the law. People continually desire to possess what they don't have. This is an interesting one. This is a law of human nature. And in fact, it goes back um, thousands of years. The Buddha said that all of life is suffering, meaning that every human being suffers. And the reason why we suffer is because of desire. We are always desiring something. We always crave something. We want more. We want more. And often we want what we can't have. We want what other people have. Too much presence suffocates others. This means is that if you are too present in somebody else's life, if you're always there every moment, other people feel suffocated. They feel like you are, they just have too much of you. A degree of absence keeps our interest. So it's a kind of game that we play. We want to be present, we want to be with other people, but we also need to give them some absence. We need to give them some space so that they continue to be interested in us. And this is not just for people, this is for products or things as well. Eva. <laughs> Okay. So today we're going to start with an example and the lady in the picture, her name is Gabrielle, I should say Gabriella Chanel. Her real name is Gabrielle Chanel. So her story is quite interesting. In 1895, when she was maybe 12 years old, she sat by her mother's bedside. Her mother was going to die in the next few days. She watched her mother die. She had some siblings, she had sisters, and they were all very poor and they lived with their relatives. They moved from one relative's home to another. Her father and mother used to travel around uh, France uh, selling different kinds of goods. They never stayed in one place. And so the children would be asked to move from one relative's home to another. And of course, the mother and father would come back to visit their children every now and again. She had a very good relationship with her mother. Her, her mother really cared about her and her siblings. But after her mother died, she knew that her father would not be able to take care of her and her siblings. And she was right. Within a few days of her mother dying, her father took her and her siblings and dropped them at an orphanage. The orphanage was run by women and it was full of girls who didn't have mothers or fathers. It was full of other orphans. Eva. 
是这个叫 Coco 的女人，然后她，呃，就是她是一个三万人的女儿，然后十二岁的时候，她就目睹了她母亲死亡，然后因为她的父母就是是去。呃，就做商人的，他们会不停的奔波在不同的地方，所以，所以，所以他就没有家。然后后来在母亲死后之后，他父亲就抛弃了他和他的那个，和他的姐妹，然后，然后就把他们放到了一个呃，基本上都是女生的一个托儿院里边。来，第二次是。So at this orphanage, Gabriella lived a very simple life. There was no music, except for church music.、Um, they had very plain food, nothing exciting, and they only had two dresses that they could wear. She tried. To, she tried to become accustomed to this, but she really hated living there. When she was a little older, she discovered some romance novels that had been smuggled, that had been secretly brought into the orphanage. They were not allowed these kinds of things. She started reading these romance novels. And she loved them because they were the stories in these books were always about a young girl like herself who was very poor and alone, and because of some mysterious or some surprising circumstance, the girl in the novel would end up becoming rich, meeting a handsome man, living in a big castle. And in these books, they always described the dresses that the girl would wear when she became rich and when she lived in this castle. When her life completely changed. Now, of course, you can imagine why Gabriella loved these stories because she had this kind of fantasy for herself. She wanted desperately for these kinds of things to happen to her and her life. This is what she most desired. But also, she knew that it was almost impossible for someone like her, for someone very poor, and and maybe not as lucky, to have something like that happen in her life. Eva. Okay.、嗯他就是在一种很简单的一种生活里，就是他没有没有音乐啊，不说教堂的音乐，然后就两条裙子，然后就此类就真好的故事，然后就在这种生活中长大，但但他长大之后，他就他就就是很想看那种
The boarding school was in a very small town in France. Gabrielle trained to become a seamstress. A seamstress is a person who makes clothes. Now, we don't know why she decided to train as a seamstress. Perhaps because she loved the description of those dresses in the romance novels that she read when she was younger. We don't know. But around this time, when she was training to become a seamstress, when she lived in that boarding school, in that small town, she discovered a new passion. She discovered something that she really loved and it was it was new for her. She had no she had never been exposed to something like this before. She found the theater. The theater is a place where actors or actresses perform. So she decided that she wanted to become a famous performer in the theater. She she loved everything about it. She loved the audiences. She loved the costumes. She loved the sets. She loved the makeup that the actors and actresses had to wear. Eva. Uh, 就离开了就之前住的那个过院的地方，然后就去一个 what is the what is the boarding school? Oh, boarding, boarding school. school. Boarding school. A boarding school is kind of like your school, where the students live in the school. They have a dormitory, and the students must live in the school all of the time. 然后他在这个技术学校里面就学习当时他想要去做一个产妇但是后来他又放弃了然后选择要去一个剧院里面去当一个著名的表演家因为他觉得他很喜欢剧院里面演员的那些衣服啊然后包括 so, so, she decided that she wanted to try everything in the theater. That was when she decided to take the stage name Coco and she and all of the other performers would call her Coco. That was the birth of her name, Coco. And she tried everything. She tried acting, she tried singing, she tried dancing. She had a lot of energy and passion and charisma. But the problem was that she did not really have enough talent to be as successful in the theater as she actually wanted to be. And she realized that. Now, after this, she had a new dream. As much as she loved the theater, she knew that it would not be suitable for her. But her new dream was to become a courtesan. So around that time, she met many actor, many actresses who could not make a living from working in the theater. They were all very beautiful and very charming women. And so what a courtesan is, a courtesan is a woman who is supported by a wealthy lover. Usually these women can live in these huge country homes, they can wear very beautiful clothes, and they have freedom. They can go anywhere they want, they can do whatever they want. They, they are not really respected by good people in the city or in the country, but they have freedom to enjoy their lives, to live in luxury and comfort and they don't have to get married to a man who they do not love 
So she decided that she wanted to be a courtesan. And around that time of working in the theater, she met a man who was very rich and who lived in a chateau. A chateau is a huge country home or a castle. And this man liked her by watching her performances. And this man decided to invite her to live in his country home. Now, Coco at that time knew that she could not make a living by working in the theater. And remember that from reading those romance novels, one of these things, living in a chateau, was one of the things that she most coveted, she most desired, she really wanted. And so she accepted the man's offer and she decided to live in that country home and be a courtesan. Eva? Uh,可以有钱,然后可以想做很好的生活,然后同时也会有自由去干这些想办的事情,而且不需要去嫁给一个自己不想要嫁的男人,所以他改变他的梦想,觉得要去当一个情况,但他在剧院里边干活的时候
At that time, women were used to wearing very tight and very uncomfortable and very formal looking clothes. What Coco loved was the freedom and the power that she felt by wearing man's, men's clothes. Men's clothes were much more simple and loose and, and she felt that it gave her a feeling of power and comfort and freedom. Eva. Coco 非常惬意的然后非常舒适的一种生活因为它里边有很多的非常想要的东西都在里面就是包括穿的吃的然后每天早上就跟其他的情妇一起去骑马然后晚上就跟其他的情妇一起去聚会但是有一点就是当他的这个男人去邀请客人来的时候所有的情妇都必须要藏在一些地方就不能去露面这个时候呢 然后做一个牌子,然后他就将这些衣服结合在一起,将男士和女士的衣服结合在一起,拿走了一顶帽子,然后他就穿上了它,然后在那个城堡的附近去走,其他的情况他这样子穿的都表示特别的,就是特别的
realized that this was becoming kind of a popular thing and Chanel and Coco had some talent with designing and so he he suggested that she use his apartment in Paris to design more hats and maybe she could start her own business. Coco thought that this was a very interesting idea and so she agreed. So she moved to Paris and she started designing her own hats and she started selling them as well. <coughs> Eva. Coco 更加喜欢去就去拼合男适合女士的衣服就找他要这种衣服好像帽子什么的然后因为当时他女士的帽子是比较笨重的然后其实他们就喜欢上了Coco给他们设计的帽子 so she started a little business in Paris and she started designing these hats and selling them and around that time she met another man from England this man was living in Paris and this man was interested in her. He liked her style and he especially liked her ambition. She had her own, her own style, right? She had these kind of like, it was like a man's style, but a little bit for a, a little bit feminine. Anyway, he, he, he fell in love with her and they started a relationship. He then started to introduce to her some some of his rich friends his some of his rich lady friends from England who started buying these hats who would come to Paris to visit Coco and buy some of her hats and also buy some of her dresses she started designing very simple dresses which had that same style of, of a little bit like like comfortable and loose but but not as um, not as formal as women's clothes of that time and so they started wearing these hats and some of these dresses around Paris and around other other um, parts of France and probably England and slowly her designs became more and more popular more and more famous then the Englishman suggested that Coco open up a small shop in a town near Paris called Deauville. Deauville was a small town where many rich and fashionable people from Paris would travel to and stay there in the summer months. And Coco thought that this was an interesting idea and so she, she opened a small shop in Deauville and she decided to move to Deauville and live there especially around the summer months when all of the other fashionable people would live there as well. She used to wear her own style clothes and her hats around Deauville 
And you know, at that time, many people would would sit around the cafes and people watch. They would watch other people walking around the city. And Coco had her own style. She had a very special look to her. And so many people were captivated. Many people would would look at her. They were they were intrigued by her and her style and her energy and her charisma. One day, Coco decided that she wanted to swim in the ocean. Around that time, it was, you have to understand that women did not swim in the ocean. They didn't even have any swimming costumes. So Coco decided to make her own swimming costume and she swam in the ocean. And she became really, really, she became the talk of the town. People started talking about her because she was a very different kind of woman and she wore these very special kinds of clothes and women were, women were, I should say women admired her. They wanted to be more like her. And so they asked her, how, how did you swim in the ocean? Where did you get the swimming costume? And so Coco started designing and selling swimming costumes at the time. And so she slowly became more well-known and more popular and her clothes and her hats started being worn by more and more people in Deauville. Eva. Uh. Coco在巴黎进行他的事业的时候，他遇到了一个来自英格兰的男人，然后这个男人也是住在巴黎的，然后这个男人很欣赏Coco的一种呃创意，还有他的野心，然后他认为这是一种呃就像是男士衣服的
fabric, a very cheap material, more and more women wanted to buy her clothes. So, she, so the price of her clothes became more and more and more expensive so that, so that not so many women could afford, but there were so many rich women would love to pay for those kinds of dresses. And she sold a lot of very expensive dresses around that time. But she also realized that because of the production, because, because it was not so easy to make more and more and more of these dresses, that the price had to be very high. And she could only sell these dresses to a certain number of women or a certain kind of woman. She, she became restless again and she wanted to impact more women, women from all of the different classes, poor, middle class and the rich. And she decided that clothes might not be the best way. She, would, she wanted to continue making clothes and hats, but she had a new idea about how to reach more and more women. She decided to make her own perfume. At around that time, it was not a very common thing for fashion shops or for fashion companies to market perfume. But remember that she was a very different kind of woman. And so, and she understood a lot about what people desire and what people covet. And so she wanted a product. She wanted to invent a perfume which was very different from the other perfumes at the time. In Paris, Many of the other perfumes were made with a single flower, a single floral scent. For example, rose or lavender or jasmine. They were very clean. They were single flower and they had these very beautiful romantic names. She decided that she did not want to make her perfume based on one flower. She wanted a mix of different flowers that people could not tell which specific flower it was. She wanted her perfume to be to smell different on different kinds of women. And also the way that she designed it was very simple. The bottle had her small logo, as everybody knows, those two C's and it didn't have a very beautiful romantic name. She just called it Chanel after herself, Chanel number no. five. And number no. five was meant to sound more like a scientific formula of some kind. As you can see, the, the perfume that she invented was completely different from any of the other perfumes at the time. Eva. Okay.呃，在Coco那些呃女性泳衣就是被更多的人发现，被更多人推崇之后，它就越来越多的女性开始去模仿Coco的穿搭，然后Coco认为自己创造了一个新的呃一个。时尚的一个流行风向，因为它让更多女性变得更加的自信，然后更加的呃更加的有独立的一种穿搭风格。虽然它当时的衣服就是使用比较便宜的，就比较简单的一种材质去制制作，但是它也因为越来越多的人想要
适合不同的呃花香做成香水，这样子的话，呃，在不同的女人身上就可以闻到不同的味道。其实它当时给它的香水就比较的简单，包装比较简单，就是两个 C 的那个呃标志，然后它也是。将香水命名为自己的，后面的名字就是香奈儿，然后后面就加上数字，像零五这样子，就没有一种很，呃很浪漫的一种名字，就是单纯的很简单的一种名字，就叫香奈儿零五零六什么什么。但是 ，So when she first started, when she first made this perfume. She didn't. She decided not to just offer it in her stores. She knew that people desire what they don't have, so she had a plan. Her idea was to focus all of her energy on creating desire, on creating this kind of coveting of this, of this perfume. She first of all did not tell anyone that she had designed this perfume. She just started to spray the perfume in her shops. In Paris and Deauville, and when women would walk into the shop, they would smell that that smell. They didn't know what it was, but every time they would walk into the shop, they they were amazed at what that、uh, amazed at that smell, and and they would ask her, Coco, what's that smell? What, what is it? How how did you how did you make your shop smell like that? It's so amazing, and she would say. I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean? There's no, you know, she she would she would pretend that she didn't know what they were talking about. Of course, she knew what she was doing. She was making it unique. She was making that smell very special, and she was she was creating demand for it. More and more of these women would talk about the smell of Chanel's shops, and they would they would want that smell. It had never. You have to understand. It had never. People had never smelled something like that before. It was a unique perfume. And to some of her clients, to the richest and the most fashionable clients that would walk into her shop, who would ask her about it, she would say nothing. But she would secretly put a bottle of her perfume with no label, with nothing, into their shopping bags when they left. Slowly, more and more women started talking about that smell and that and that perfume, and these women started wearing the perfume. And other women would ask them, "What is that? Where did you get that perfume? What, what, what brand is that?" And more and more people desired this because they couldn't have it. She wasn't selling it yet. Slowly, slowly, she started offering them. In her shops, she would keep a few bottles around the shop, and in the first few weeks, when she started selling them, they would sell out so quickly. There just wasn't enough. People would immediately want to buy them, and they would get sold out every single day. There wasn't. People would ask, and she would be like, "Sorry, we've already sold out today. Maybe you can come back tomorrow. Maybe you can try again." For the first few weeks, they could not sell enough perfumes. They didn't have enough to sell. It just kept getting sold out. Eva. Coco, she, um, is wanting to just very simple to promote her own scent, to leave a very strong impression. 于是他就没有很大肆的宣传，就在他那个在斗六的那家小商铺里边，就，呃，就用自己的香水，就放那个味道出来。然后，当有一些女士走进来买东西的时候，就会闻到这个味道，她就会问 Coco 这是什么味道，就从来没有闻过。然后 Coco 说：“我也不知道，可能是从某处飘过来的吧。”但是，但是这种味道就很特别，于是。就成为了很多的女士的呃一些话题，那他们会不同在讨论，就香味从哪里从哪里从哪里，因为这个香味是独一无二，它并非一种很单一，就很多花香混合在一起的。于是就除此之外呢 ，Coco 呢会在每个买了她东西的女士的那个那个购物包里边，就会悄悄放下一小瓶，就是
没有标签，但是装有那个香水的那种香水小样，然后放在里边，然后就越来越多的女士开始携带个香水走在斗六那里，然后就越来越多的人开始就询问那些女的香水到在哪里买，在哪里买，然后就会来到了 Coco 的小店里面，然后就 Coco 一开始就没有卖，到后面的话。后面的话就开始说他自己要卖那个香水，在第一周卖的时候就非常迅速的，就，他说你下次再来吧，下次再来吧，我们真的没有了。Yes, that's it. Since then, the perfume Chanel Number、no. Five became and has still. It, and it still is one of the most popular perfumes in the world, probably the best-selling perfume in the world. And even her her clothes and her fashion stores. She was a leader at the time. She was a leader of fashion. But during World War Two, the Nazis came to Paris, and. And she closed her shops at the time, but she continued to live in Paris, and she supported the Nazis. And many people, of course, as you know, and from history,、um, that was one of the worst things that has happened in history. And because she supported them, she felt ashamed after the war, and she decided to leave France. And she ran away to Switzerland. She basically disappeared from France, and she disappeared from the fashion world after World War II because of her support for Hitler and the Nazis. She lived in Switzerland for many years in hiding, possibly because of embarrassment. But when she was seventy. Years old, she decided that she wanted to re-enter the fashion world. This is one of the most difficult things. For many years, people had forgotten about Chanel, and she decided that she wanted to start again, to start from nothing and build a fashion company again. She decided that she wanted to start again because she realized that the fashion of the time was again becoming more and more constricted. Women were again starting to wear these very uncomfortable, very, very. How how should I say? Very powerless sort of clothes. And she hated the fashion of the time. She could see that it was going backward, and. Her style was always more about freedom and power and comfort, more of like a man's style. So she wanted to come back again, and she so she redesigned clothes, and she decided to have to start her. Sorry, she decided to have a fashion show in Paris when she was seventy years old. Her her fashion show. In her fashion show, the models, same the same as many years before the war, the the models all had the same short hairstyle like her. They all wore those same kind of powerful male straw hats with with slight feminine designs, and even the clothes were very similar to her previous style, except with a few small changes. And at the time. Many people in the fashion industry could see. They thought that you know this woman. This woman is trying to live in the past. She's trying to bring back just her her old styles one more time, and and they were not impressed by this. They they felt they felt that she didn't have any any connection to modern style, and they started to bring up the news about her connection with Hitler and the Nazis. They just they just wanted her to stop. They just thought that you know, she's just she can't she cannot、uh, begin this this fashion. She cannot start her fashion career again. It's just she's lost it. But Chanel had a different idea. 
she wasn't really that concerned with what the the fashion industry in Paris said or the, what the French fashion industry said her target was America she realized at the time that American women were much more interested in her style in having that comfort and that freedom and that power and they were more athletic she also realized that in you know, the, the, the women in America had money they had the most amount of money to spend on fashion and she was right by within a few months American women started to buy more and more of her designs she became really really famous and there was a huge demand for her style in the US and that was how she moved back at, moved back into that position of a leader in the fashion industry and slowly because more and more Americans started buying her her clothes the French fashion industry slowly started to support her Eva Switzerland is Reishu, is it? I think it's Reishu. Radian. Fashion 不支持他并没有表示出很深刻的一种偏中性化的就不是就放在美国那边但是然后事实也是如他所料美国那边就开始就去购买他的设计就他又是有必要的很受欢迎 A few more things The last few things I want to talk about uh, regarding Coco Chanel the first thing is that after the comeback, after becoming a leader in the fashion industry one more time, when she was 70 years old, one of the most amazing things that happened was that Jacqueline Kennedy, the wife of the president of the US, 
uh, John Kennedy started wearing Coco Chanel's suits when she made public appearances. That was proof that Coco had come back and was a leader of the fashion industry when the president's wife started wearing her clothes. That was one thing. The second thing that was quite interesting about Coco was that, or about Chanel, was that at that time, many fashion designers were very, very careful about piracy. Piracy is where other people copy your clothes and they make fake versions of your designs. And so many fashion brands would guard their secrets very carefully. They would not allow people to take pictures because they didn't want other people to copy their designs. And if other people did copy their designs, they took them to court, there was a lawsuit, they would sue them, and they would make people stop copying their clothes. Chanel was completely different. She encouraged piracy. She would allow anybody to come to her fashion shows to take pictures. She would even allow rich women to bring their own tailors to the fashion show to make sketches and to copy her designs. She encouraged more and more people to copy it, to, to make fake versions of her clothes. She wanted more and more people to wear her designs. She wanted more and she wanted to see more and more of her designs all around. This is what spread her fame and this is what really gave her power. You can imagine coming from a, a background, living in an orphanage, coming from a poor um, lifestyle, a very simple life to where she was now, one of the most famous and powerful women in the world in the fashion industry. She never told people about herself, about her history and her childhood. She always kept herself, uh, she always kept some mystery around herself and her story. She never talked about her childhood. She told different stories so people didn't really know very much about her history. She never told anybody about the ingredients of her perfume. She never tried to describe her style. She always tried to keep things a little vague and mysterious and that's what kept people more and more interested in her and her work. Eva. Sai 他们美国的一些女性就争相想要去模仿他们总统夫人的服饰进行拍照的或是进行抄袭的什么的直接点什么的就如果他们发现了有人去会去会去复制他们的设计他们会去他们会用一种很强硬的手段去惩罚他们但是Coco就是 走势的时候，他很欢迎人们去拍照，就很欢迎人们带着一些呃别的人去呃进行去观察他的一些设计什么的。呃呃，但除此之外呢，他是一个总的来说，他是一个非常成功的例子，就是从一开始的。一开始的一个很贫穷的
他从不提及自己的童年时代，这样子会让他在别人的眼前就表现出一种神秘感，然后别人就对他越来越感兴趣。不单只是他个人的魅力，也对他的一种设计特别的感兴趣，所以他就成为了呃其中一个很著名的设计师。大家等待。Thank you very much, Eva.